there is a good possibility that it actually could get punished by the combo, for example, which Nerea simply happens to have. We can imagine that, like, yeah, I mean, simply imagining Sixo having. Ooh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. How much damage is that with the. Uh, yeah, I mean, Ragnaros will definitely hit something, right? So it's like, and something not being face, let's say. So I'm saying if uh, uh, Ragnaros would have not hit face then the maximum damage is like 20, so uh, Xixo would have actually not been required to Clarino Jackson here now. He could have actually waited un for Starlock to arrive. Ooh, BGH. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, pretty big everything, right? BGH coming down, Shapeshift coming down. Yeah, pretty sick top deck actually. Oh. What is with the White Cross? Why didn't Nerea already play White Cross first? Does he really want to play Force of Nature here? It's an interesting choice. That's probably okay. I mean, Nerea does have also the Savage Raw. I have also to say that I was, has, have not been sold completely on the Savage Raws, uh, on the Savage Raws, on the Reno Jackson. Especially not in Druid. I mean, in Druid, you, you need to cut so many of your good cards, of your goodies that it really could hurt you eventually and this is also what you see here a deck of only one of is simply not even close to as strong as it could be in druid if you would run two offs to innovate two white crows, two wrath, two swipes, two keepers so much stuff you would really 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 like to run twice in druid hmm. <laughs> the general VM, of course. So, Highlander Druid, uh, Highlander Warrior against Okay, so, I, <laughs> okay, no, 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 I was just a little bit, like, I know six is a little bit cropped, so the production guy is actually uh, <laughs> drawing through whatever, no, never mind. So here, um, interesting, interesting matchup, so uh, who will win? Will it be the warrior or the warrior? We see two different kind of warriors here. 
Warrior number one being a control warrior with his like a Highlander, Sixus Highlander warrior. The other warrior being the warrior of Nerea actually running stuff like Death Lord, meaning it's like actually a fatigue warrior. So which warrior will have like the better chances to actually win this game here? And healing, healing 22 uh, or 20 life usually could help. On the other hand, only running uh, and the Gohol for sure will also help. On the other hand, only running one-offs could actually harm you. But the funny thing comes here, like um, only running one-offs means you only run one Acolyte, and this actually even helps you because running two Acolyte is actually bad. Yeah, the, in the mirror and. The same actually applies for stuff like sheet block. So usually you could think of perhaps running two of those, but if you run one, it's also actually better for the mirror. So a lot of stuff which actually is helping you for the mirror here. Yes, yeah, so Nerea actually simply ignores the source, and that's actually quite a good move because you can actually do so because you can you don't really respect Thorison. Um, against uh, a warrior, it will not, it won't matter in the end. Like the mana, the amount of mana won't really matter in the end, and that's also the reason why Xixu is actually also ignoring the cut purse. Now, uh, sorry, Neria is actually ignoring the cut purse. Yeah. Okay. So well, there are few possible options here one being fiery vorex attack attack the other one being gohol and attack attack with a cut purse and i also like the gohol much more simply because first of all you stay mana efficient but it's not only about staying mana efficient but it's also of preventing your opponent of getting a good trade with the x and we see gromash uh, jumping out here and bam Another player could have been. Oh, well, that's not realistic. No, that's okay. Just not giving Neria any value from the Warrex. I really like that. What now? Hmm, tired, you say? Yeah. Could be, perhaps a little bit. Hmm. Okay. Okay, brawl makes sense. Yeah, kind of nice discounts. Yeah, shield blocks are not to be played in this matchup as long as it's not absolutely necessary. Neria, unfortunately, at 18 life. Otherwise, he could have hit Sorison and played the revenge. Yeah, but it's not possible under these circumstances. Unfortunately, Neria is one life too healthy. So that's the reason why he also needs to use slam. Just that, yeah. It's just minus one card, just because because of that. The life count be uh, the card count being 18 against 19. Six were having like <laughs> plenty, plenty much more armor, plenty much more life. And you're really curious how this will pan out, but shield block is not to be played. Shield block being worth much more if not being played. But it's interesting that Sixo even decides not to drop this Lothab down. I'm really curious what's the idea behind that, because Lothab could already deal some damage. 
And actually, we also see that Nerea doesn't have a handle for Lothab. I mean, I mean, Sixo doesn't know that, but I mean that's the case. Nerea not having like the handle. Okay, now he would have had the uh, kind of had the handle with with the X and with Bash, respectively. Harrison Jones also not to be played. Dr. Boom, usually you want to use uh, your brawl against Dr. Boom. Okay, in this case that's not possible. There's the shield slam coming down. Mm, that's quite expensive, to be honest. Like using this um, using this weapon charge to kill the boom bot. Do you really want to do that? I'm really curious because you just deployed your armor smith anyways. So is it really mandatory to use a full weapon charge? Especially the, because the five attack weapon charge is of so tremendous value because you can actually kill badgers with it and you can kill um, shield mains with it. So I'm I'm really wondering whether this was um, necessary to attack the boom bot there. So Nerea is uh, opting in to use the Gromash. We see Xixo face tanking in the 10. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's more than Hearthstone, guys. That's more than Hearthstone. Yeah, I'm really curious whether Xixo should have taken the 10. He could have also instead played uh, an Execute or a Crush. It seemed weird, to be honest, because like the amount of Nerea's threat should... Um, or, let's say, the, the amount of Xixo's removal should... Uh, should overvalue or outlast Nerea's threats by far. Usually you're... I mean, if you play Deathwing, you're like... Two two um, answers over the amount of threats, respectively. What I'm saying is, instead of using the uh, goal to actually kill Gromash, um, Xixu could have actually traded a, a crush or an execute, but probably a crush um, to save ten life. Could probably be important later. Also considering that Nerea's deck is actually a fatigue warrior and as such and as such it's um it's very likely that he even runs less threats than a normal deck. Oh yay <laughs> not really right Yeah we will see how this goes. Okay, it's perhaps only that card, right? Oh, come on! Huh? Ah! ah, ah. Bam! Twenty-five. Okay. Yeah, Reno Jackson arrived. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, yeah. It's not doing much at the moment. Okay. You yeah, are Taskmaster and Slam. That's. A very good decision. You don't want to take the six. Yeah, I'm just curious. I mean, what we see is like 10 cards against 10 cards. But I somehow already see six. So, um, being left with probably one removal at the end of the game. I mean, we, we will see whether this will be the case. But I'm very curious. I mean, the thing is, I can I can definitely also see reasoning of keeping like removals because you are afraid that your opponent could play an Isera, for example. You are then not be able to handle. But usually, like the fatigue warrior, um, simply doesn't run stuff like Isera. The fatigue warrior simply wants to fatigue the opponent, and that's the only purpose. 
and not running any of the big guys at all. Yeah, Xixo on the other hand. Okay. Eight cuts against nine cuts. And here we have to say it's probably Xixo's luck that Nerea didn't draw the second Death Lord in time. In time means to be able to mill out one card. So it's of uttermost important that the Death Lord of Nerea will come sooner than later. The earlier the better. Because it's of tremendous importance that um, the Death Lord, Nerea's second Death Lord, will be able to pull out one minion of Xixus deck. And of tremendous importance, we are talking here probably 16, 17 life. This one card, which the Death Lord could pull out of Xixus library, um, or uh, respectively out of Xixus deck, could be worth, yeah, something like this, 16, 17 life. And there is still no death rod. It's so important. So important that the death rod will come. I can take the hit. Yeah. You can see Crash being used on a 5-5 now. And this is like what I told you earlier, so um, it's like, I mean, it's okay. It's still a decent target, right? It's not that bad. But then there's still the Execute which wants to find the target. Have you seen Nerea actually also playing an Acolyte in the Fatigue Warrior? Okay, that's interesting. And he really, really wants to get this value out of the brawl. On the other hand, it's really debatable whether you can simply let a 3-5 live like that. No, out of the sole reason that the 3-5 yeah. deals 3 damage every turn. And that's of quite big importance in this matchup. So you see a bouncing blade. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Nerea doesn't really have a handle for all the threats, I have to say. If Sisu would just play like one minion every time, it would probably be enough. There is simply not enough handle in Nerea's hand. Yeah. I think that was the last time where Nivri actually could have drawn the Death Lord. Yeah, yeah. Six are actually being forced to play something now. What should it be? Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Uh, well, actually, there is also not much which could come down. There's actually only the Harrison Jones. Harrison Jones being used this anyway, but what? What a revenge. Oh, really? I don't know about that. I mean, Harrison, why, why not Harrison Jones? I mean, it's like, uh, Harrison Jones is useless anyways. You cannot use it for weapons. So now, now he drew the second death lord, but it's probably too late. It's three cards, it's two cards. This will simply get unhandled if Kixo is clever. And yeah, he will not handle it until the last card has been drawn. So now, yeah, simply ignoring the death lord. Now probably Harrison Jones should come down. Um, two, four, six, eight, ten. Yes, exactly. Yeah, Harrison Jones comes down. You ignore the Death Lord. I don't know whether Xixu could keep track of all the cards, but if he did, then so probably the only like this will now attack Sylvanas. 
I think if there's only if there's one million in six or stack left, this was the, a misplay. Like the Savannah's was a misplay then, but I guess I guess uh, Xixo knows that there's no minion left in his deck. Otherwise, he could have not played it like that. So yeah, exactly what you see. Like no minions in the deck. Otherwise, Xixo would have not been able um, to yeah to play this against the Death Lord. Because again, like losing one card out of your library is worth like 16, 17 life. It's really important. So what is with the amount of threats? Or what amount of minions? Now there is the death bite, right? So Saracen didn't get deployed. Oh, oh, oh. the boom. But then there is a brawl now. I mean... Hmm. Uh, I don't know about that. It looks strange. I know he needed to get rid of one card in his hand, but it still looks strange. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. But he didn't want to lose this card, whatever it is. Harrison could have not been played because now there is a weapon, and that's exactly what I was talking about earlier. It's weird. It's 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 seriously weird. If this is if this is a minion, which it is, um, chances are that uh, yeah, yeah, hmm. chances are that uh, six to just threw that. I'm not kidding here. This this could be really. I didn't I didn't count it exactly, but this death lord like okay so yeah there's brown get on the deck like there was a death lord on the board. Hmm. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, it was probably not that easy. I mean, on the other hand, there was also the possibility of the overthrow. It wasn't that easy, guys. Really not. I mean, I guess probably the best would have been to simply deploy Harrison Jones at the turn where he actually threw like the the revenge. Um, but I'm not. I'm not entirely sure whether you could have ignored the Death Lord because like there was the chance to actually overthrow. But then again, actually no. You would probably simply take the overthrow. Why shouldn't you take the overthrow? If you know that you have Baron Ghetto in the deck, you just take the overthrow. Yeah, because you don't want to draw Baron Gadon, it's better to lose Baron Gadon than get this one card deeper. What we'll probably even, what we could even see, I mean, first of all, you just saw the weapon attack, which is also kind of weird. Or is it? No, probably it is. And, um, but yeah, this one card, I don't know, perhaps, yeah. It looks it, it it looks like a misplay. I don't know whether it's um, it's guaranteed a misplay, but losing this one card is of so tremendous importance because I mean you see it yourself. Like at the moment, like this is 76 against 90, so six was actually 14 life ahead. Actually, he's not only 14 life ahead, but he's actually 14 plus 16 life ahead. So in fact, he's like something like 30 life ahead. But this could make the difference. <laughs> This could really make the difference. This one card. We will see, guys. We will just see. But I'm just saying it, it, it could eventually make the difference. It's, um, it's so much. Like, this one card, it will fatigue 16, 17, 18. Press, press that card you just saw getting, like drawn out of the deck by the death lord could could mean like a difference of 18 life actually it's really huge and now Xixo is actually calculating whether yeah whether he will simply die because he's 
two cuts deeper and actually and this is also a help if you ever encounter this situation you can actually just see it like that that Sixo actually loses two life more every turn and the question is how many turns uh, do we have here in fatigue so that turn um, Neria actually gains one more armor so this is one turn then there is a second turn where he actually loses one and then there is like 79 life to go and 79 life means um yeah is it is it 11 is it 12 turns it's probably 12 turns so we have like 14 turns probably the game will 14 15 probably the game will prolong another 14 15 turns um, which makes up for the 30 life loss or respectively it means that it will probably go to 17 or 18 fatigue yeah something like this and this should probably well as i said i haven't counted it but without this one card it would have been a clear loss for neria and with this card being deeper i'm not that sure to be honest let's see Yeah, it, it could probably still be enough simply. Yeah. No, yeah, I think it's still enough. Yeah, true. And what is with the Belcher, by the way? Doesn't want to play Neria the Belcher at some point. There's not that much time left. Perhaps Neria should play the Belcher at some point. I mean, Belcher actually being pretty useful if your opponent only does have a 4 attack weapon. He would even need to spend the Execute then. Hmm. Yeah, Belcher. Belcher would pretty good also attacking with a weapon already what also makes sense simply attack with a weapon here and play the belcher i mean at some point the belcher must hit the board and this is the thing you don't want that the belcher hits the board after this attack once yeah and you also know that you don't have anything right of course you play the belcher it should it should have been done probably earlier to be honest but that should be still okay yeah, it should be still okay. Yeah, the badger is a big problem. Exactly, yeah. Um, it's interesting, right? Because... I mean, Xixo, I'm not saying Xixo should know Nuria's deck list, but the second the deck, the Belcher was pretty likely. So perhaps Xixo could have made a point attacking first with a weapon at least once. Perhaps. Perhaps. Yeah. Because that would have been much better, at least from this perspective now. Um, I mean, now it's it really like this badger really poses a problem now. And if Xixu would have only swing uh, swing once with the X, it would have not posed a problem. At the same time, he's in area, and if he would have actually played the badger a little bit earlier, um, the badger would have actually had more time to deal uh, chunks of damage. If you want to say so, <laughs> yeah, it's it's as it is, guys. Yeah, probably deployed the badger earlier. Yeah. Yeah, it would have been quite better, yeah. Then again, of course, we see both sides and we see both hands. Mm. Yeah, but but yes, I mean, I think to deploy the Belcher earlier, that was a pretty clear one in this, in this regard, at least. Okay, but here's the execute. It's coming now. Yeah. Oh, uh, and also, just as a side note, you see um, the Harrison actually 
yeah, being completely stuck for the entirety of the game. So instead of being a 5-4 body, which, he could, which could have made a difference too, um, now, yeah, it simply got wasted if you want to say so. That's a pity. Yeah, this is... I don't know, perhaps it's... Um, But also we see that the weapons don't swing. This, uh, the, the weapon charges... Neria won't be able to use the weapon charges uh, if he played it how he played it. Right? How much are we in fatigue? 14. So that's like a 10 life loss or what? No, that should be still... Should it be in time? 12, 24... 34, a fatigue for 14. So it goes to 20. It goes to 24. No, Neria won't be able to use the weapon charges. He simply won't be able, because he will die in two turns. No, no, will he? No, he will. No, 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 it was good, sorry. Um, that, no, it was okay. He, he, he doesn't die. Never mind. He can, he can get eight. Yeah, but Xixo dies now, right? Yeah, Xixo dies exactly even a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah, it, it goes, it burns down to this one card. You see, uh, you see Nerea being at 20 minus uh, 16. Well, well, actually... No, Nerea could have not used all the weapon charges. No, it was correct what I said. Nerea went to 20, he would have fatigued to 6, he would have armor up to 10 and then he would have died. Before he could have actually used all the weapon charges. On the other hand, um, <laughs> yeah, Xixo lost because he was one card too deep. Uh, so, it was a weird game, guys, really. That that was really a weird game. But sometimes, as I said, like it looks easier from our perspective because we see both hands. So, it's quite easy to say, yeah, Xixo should have remembered that there is still a Belcher uh, uh, on, on the rear side. So, he should have probably better attacked with the Death Bite because he should know that there is a Belcher. And if this Belcher actually would have hit the board, then... Then the death bite, uh, then it would have been so much better. It's always easier to say that, and it's the same also with like, I mean, the Harrison. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yes, I mean, I said like you should have played it, but then again, if you read the, your opponent and having a death bite and you just don't want to play the five four right now, there are also arguments not to do it. I, um, so it's it's not that. Here. And what did we also have? Oh, yeah, that that the one the one minion which was actually burned from the library because of the death rod kill. Yeah, that that probably was indeed not that cool. That was indeed not that correct because one card in this matchup, especially being already directly at fatigue, is really huge. That's really huge. Okay, um, just check whether the quality is still okay. Is everything all right? Okay, so going into, I don't even know what's the score, because like this game just, yeah, but I think Neria is just ahead 2-0, two to zero. and um, yeah, and we see, we see Warlock and against, uh, against Warlock, and um, well, I don't want to say it, but there, there is a chance that we will perhaps see why, um, why Highlander Warlock is not always superior. Well, in the mirror, it's pretty ridiculous because the um, the ve uh, oh well, actually, Nereus deck is also Highlander. Yeah? <laughs> no, never mind. I thought I thought Nereus deck was actually Demon Warlock, but we already said um, one match earlier that it could also be Highlander Warlock, and uh, obviously now we see we don't see a Reno Jackson yet, but it's it's uh, evident that Nereus also plays this Highlander Warlock. Okay.
I'm really curious whether the Reno Jackson is really doing the uh, difference. Um, we also see Nerea with a secret ultra mega secret tech card um, being the sacrificial pact. Yeah. Looky dooky, guys. Looky dooky. Yeah. That's actually, well, I'm saying it's ultra surprising. Because there's a reasoning to be made to play that card. Especially in a. Um, Especially in uh, Highlander, because your general card quality can be a little bit lower, and you know that some people are actually playing Lord Jaraxxus, and even if they don't, you can still use Sacrificial Pack on your own demons if you want to do that. There's Jaraxxus, pretty mighty. Yeah, I mean, we will just see. But chances are not even that low that Sixo will think that Jaraxxus is the key to win this, uh, winning this game. Chances, uh, chances are not that low, and well, <laughs> we know what what will happen then. Uh, Demon Rust, really strong. Um, Jaroxus killing this. Love that. They win. At the moment, Sixo still doesn't have um, Jaroxus in the hand, but. Oh, ja Flame Juggler, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's why I don't like. Yeah, it's a flimsy juggler really that good. I mean, you need to play suboptimal cards, but yeah, I mean, it's nice to get a big heal in Warlock, so it's not that one sided. Yeah, my gun is pretty cool if you. Uh, <laughs> like, Jaraxxus heals himself and also grows. Yeah, of course, bam! Um, my gun is. Um, Jaraxxus kills the 5 5. Pam Pam face. It's not bad. I mean, it won't get better. You, even your you one one even gets race three dealing additional damage. Like how how can my guns get better? What is the alternate play? There is no alternate play. I wonder. I mean, for what? Okay. Apparently. <laughs> Apparently Nerea isn't my opinion. I can definitely see also Nerea's point of saying like tapping is important. But guys, I mean, it's just like a 9-7 if your opponent doesn't have BGH, it's super insane. This heals itself and grows to 5. You can use this for trading, uh, actually inflicting the position of having even a better board. This grows to 3-3. Three, three. It's mana efficient. It would have been actually pretty good, guys. Really, it would have been pretty good. I'm not saying there are not no reason, not also reasons to tap, but but the value, the the value cannon. Uh, we didn't see the value cannon. Okay, yeah, implosion for two. It's Jaraxxus is not feeling it. I mean, yeah. I mean, he's not looking as uh, he was getting hit by a bomb. It's still is 3-8. He's just rubbing it off, like... I can even see him, like... Yeah, your meeklings. Yeah, get away from me. Nasty imps. Okay, so Dr. Boom. No handle for Thorison. That's pretty huge. That's pretty huge that there is no handle for Thorison. <laughs> yeah, these Highlander decks, guys, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, not not like the best... <laughs> not like the best... Um, how do you say? Um, appearance they are making here. Ah, damn it. I, I really wanted so badly to see the Sacrificial Pact in action. Do you actually realize that none of those players actually have the Reno Jackson being already quite low on life? Okay. So, yeah, there must be the Siphon Soul on. What? Yeah, right. Okay. Ah, the discount's also being pretty huge. Yeah, attacking Thorson. Hitting the Drake for 3, Hellfire, yeah, that's pretty good, yeah. Hellfire, Mortal Coil, yeah. 
That's pretty good. I, I don't know, I have the feeling that we will get our Jaraxxus action. Uh, I want to see Xixxus face. If <laughs> I mean, Xixxus is also known for like um, sometimes tilting a little bit, right? So um, I wouldn't see it. And he's also known that he actually deletes his opponents from the friend list after um, like sometimes. So. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Neria would straight off jump off Xixxus' friend list after <laughs> after the sacrificial effect <laughs> cleared off the Jaraxxus. Okay, Shadow Flame coming in. Tinkle, tinkle. Reno Jackson! <laughs> 30. What do you know? I'm at 30 life. So what is it? 8 against 9. Okay, so <laughs> we are actually getting lower and lower. Yeah, my gun is... well, he's sitting in the hand. <laughs> Not being able to do... what his destiny would have been. He's hating the rear for sure too. Like, um, or not too, but like he's he's like, hey, Neria, why didn't you summon me? Why didn't you summon me when I was? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, perhaps the tap was also better. I mean, because uh, um, yeah, I mean, or not better, but was definitely an alternate alternate play too. Um, okay. Okay. So here, what Ingram was Pyromancer? Even trading. Uh, why should you? Why should you trade that? Molten Giant's already out. I don't think you you want to trade that. There's no reason, right? I mean, the permanence is doing nothing. So many possibilities. The thing is, you can just go face because the permanence, his permanence, will actually um, will actually trade with you, Reno Jackson. Yeah. Okay, doing this. Yeah. We know Jackson. Pew, pew. So what's the thing here? Now we are not playing the cards. We are not playing the cards in the hand. Now we are actually playing the cards in the library. Like now we are actually playing the cards of the entire deck. Why I'm saying that? It's actually now really, really important who actually has like more value in the entire deck. It's not any longer about the value of the hand but it's now about the value of the deck and for such a thing like like the tap on Neri actually exercised earlier actually perhaps increased a little bit perhaps the the amount of value of the hand not even that necessarily but uh, it definitely could uh, like playing my guns could have definitely increased the value of the entire deck by a lot yeah so perhaps Perhaps that was also a consideration. Okay, but yeah, I mean, we know <laughs> we know what will happen, right? Jiraxus, sacrificial pact, GG. Three O <laughs> sweep. Yeah, probably. So Not unlikely. No Four against three. Yeah. Yeah, protecting it behind the belcher is perfectly fine. It's really good. On the other hand, Neria knows that there is still a Demon Wrath, right? Yeah. What I'm saying is if he knows that there is still a Demon Wrath, perhaps it would have been better to attack face with Sylvanas. 
instead of attacking this 3-3. Three, three. But then again, this is what I talked to, uh, told you earlier. Um, the disparity between how you would play if you would know all cards and how you actually plays if you just don't know all the cards. In this case... Yeah, that, that's quite of a decision here. But yeah, so of course you play differently if you know all the cards in the opponent's hand left. Um, so does does Xixo even play Jaraxxus? It's not a demon theme, right? Well, I don't know whether it's not, but um, Xixo could simply not run Jaraxxus at all. Could that be? Yeah, perhaps, right? Who knows? But yeah, I mean... Uh, Xixo sends him, doesn't. Okay, yeah. There is simply no Jaraxxus. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Poor sacrificial pact. Yeah. Both players actually have, have played their entire library, their entire deck. There is a Doom God, and the Doom God will come. Ah, oh, obligation. Okay. No heal board. Uh, heal board would have been a good idea. Very good idea. It seems that Nerea didn't watch the other game. Because if Nerea would have watched the other game, he would know that there is still a Molten Giant in Sixus deck. So you would have known that there would have been still a Molten Giant in Sisu's deck. Of course you played the Doom God here. Like, but... Yeah. Yeah, but, but yeah, Neria wins this. Yeah. yeah, now he realizes. Yeah, now he realizes, like, it's like, what the fuck. But yeah, it's enough anyways. It's enough anyways. But I think Neria simply thought it has to be Jaraxxus. So he kept the sacrificial pact all the time, but yeah, a pretty insane game in the last game, right? I mean, that was an insanely skillful game. So many little decisions which could have, like, gone the one way or the other. Okay, so I'm giving you to the production guys again, and yeah, we see each other after the break. With the next game, uh, with the next match, which is actually the loser's bracket, Meaning, um, we will see the following players uh, in the bracket. Are you against Strife Crew? And we are looking forward to that. So, see you then.